Hey, hey, tech fans, welcome back to Tech Sidelines High Tech Studios at the Corporate Research Center located in Blacksburg, Virginia, for another edition of the Recruiting Roundup. This is the show where you will find the best analysis on Virginia Tech football and basketball recruiting anywhere, and I mean anywhere. If you haven't checked out the first episode, go ahead and click this little blurb that popped up on your screen to get caught up on the previous week's Virginia Tech football recruiting news. Recruiting Roundup is brought to you by Tech Sidelines presenting sponsor, First Bank and Trust Company where exceptional customer service comes first. They offer a variety of checking and savings account options that are sure to meet your banking needs. Since 1979, they are proudly offered free checking. Visit firstbank.com to learn more. With all that out of the way, I am your host, Nick Brown, and I am joined alongside lead analyst and columnist and red shirt enthusiast, Mr. Chris Coleman. And the Hokies, they added four five, four new commits to their 2025 football recruiting class. And one that caught us off guard, the 2026 class already has a recruit in the boat. But all five of these commits all come within that local radius. And before we start diving into them, I want to ask you, Throughout these first two and a half, you could really say, recruiting cycles, how effective has that local philosophy been? I think it kind of builds on itself, and to a certain extent. I think there's a certain level that Virginia Tech fans and Virginia Tech want to get to Mm -hmm. that they'll have to win more games Mm -hmm. but before they can start signing five of the top ten again, like they used to on a fairly regular basis. And until then, they're going to be two to three of the of the top ten, which is about what they're at right now. But uh, as far as everybody else goes, uh, yeah, I mean, I think that helps. I think it builds on itself. And, and I think, uh, obviously, you see all the green run kids mm-hmm. uh, coming into Virginia Tech. Uh, so, I mean, I think it helps uh, when you make it a focus and, and it's kind of a, you know, a snowball rolling downhill t- type of thing. Now, the next step, of course, will be, well, there's two steps. You have to win more games to get to that next level of recruit in the state of Virginia. And you also have to make sure these guys, the vast majority of these guys, develop and have success at the college level. Because if they don't, then, you know, four years from now, you're not going to be as successful in state because those players are going to say, oh, those guys didn't have success when they went to Virginia Tech. So... So I think, you know, step one is pretty much done now. You've mm-hmm. established the relationships. You've, you've created the foundation. Now you're on the step two and step three of the process. Well, let's start off today with uh, the highest rated recruit and the newest recruit as well in the class. Matthew Alton, wide receiver athlete is what he's listed as, but he's going to play wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Six foot, 210 pounds. And you might think, man, that's a little big. That might be too much weight. This kid can fly for 210 pounds. Yeah, um, I think he's a good athlete. He's got great size overall. He should play on the outside for Virginia Tech. He lists himself at 6'2". Some people list him at six feet. I don't know. I'm just going to call him six one. Mm-hmm. At any rate, uh, he's kind of a he's kind of a do it all player for IC Norcom. They didn't have a great year last year, only four and six. So he didn't get as many touches, and I think he got hurt also at the same time. So he didn't get as many touches last year uh, as he would have liked. But when he did, he made them count. And Virginia Tech beat out good competition for him. Uh, Penn State, mm-hmm. uh, Penn State wanted him badly. And that, that's the bigger thing to me here. I think Alton's a very good prospect who's worthy of his ranking, but I think his, his commitment, and I'm going to write about this in a TSL Pass article <laughs> later today and go into more detail, but uh, Penn State wanted Fontel Mines. He was their number one choice for wide receivers coach. The Hokies paid big money to keep him. So instead, Penn State hired Marquise Hagens from UVA, and this was a Mines versus Hagens battle mm-hmm. that Mines won. And so you're already seeing that investment into Fontel Mines. Well, it was already paying off, but now you're like, man, are we really paying an assistant coach that much? Yeah, and it's worth it. Certainly worth it. I see Norcom, like you said, four and six, three A football. And you might think, dang, that's not that good. He he dominated three A football like he should if you're that highly rated. Only the second wide receiver in the class joining Jaden Anderson. And I saw a tweet, uh, I think. I forget who it was, but they essentially listed out the high school rankings for the receivers that Fontel Mines has brought in. And he's brought in some pretty big fish already. And on top of the transfers, that's a really deep group right now. 
Yeah, it really is, which is really interesting when you consider Virginia Tech's philosophy. Um, they're going to run the ball more times than not. They're recruiting mobile quarterbacks. Uh, we saw how often they, they, they ran it once Kyron Drones became the signal caller last year. So it's funny to me that they're deeper at wide receiver <laughs> than they are at running back, even though they're going to be running the ball more. Um, so that, that we'll have to see how that plays out over time. Um, because the, you know, if you're, if, if you're that fifth receiver mm -hmm. on the roster, you're just not going to get as many touches as you would like. So we'll see. Matthew Alton, the second top 10 in the Commonwealth to join the Virginia Tech recruiting class, joining Brett Clatterbow. And those are the only two consensus four stars uh, in this class so far. However, we know how those recruiting services change ratings very frequently, and that can certainly change after a senior film of this specific running back, Jeff Overton. He might be one of those late bloomers uh, committing to Virginia Tech last week on June 28th. Yeah, took official visits to Tech, Maryland, South Carolina, and UVA. Uh, there was a time when South Carolina thought they had him in the bag, but Virginia Tech uh, won the battle and uh, I, I think eventually really beat out Maryland. And if you if you look at Twitter and you look at some of the <laughs> tweets from Elijah Brooks and people like that, I, I think there's some serious beef between the Maryland staff and the Virginia Tech staff right now. Um, you know, not only with uh, – with Jeff Overton, but the linebacker from DeMatha as yeah. well. Both of those guys picked Virginia Tech over the in-state school. And, uh, and I, I think there's a bit of, especially when you said Elijah Brooks, the recruiter came from Maryland to Virginia Tech and is a former DeMatha head coach. I think there's a little bit of a resentment there on Maryland's part. But, uh, you know, back to Overton, very prolific player for freedom. He's going to play for Hayfield this year because that coaching staff left Freedom and went to Hayfield. They were so dominant at Freedom that, I mean, they were routinely beating teams like 60 to nothing. And one, one game, I think they scored 116 points. Mm -hmm. um, they are a team of supermen. And when you outclass your opposition that badly, so it's hard for an individual to stand out, but Overton does. Yeah. That said, it's harder to get a scouting report on him. Like if, if you're a college recruiter, if you're a scout, when you're just dominating <laughs> people that isn't anywhere your level of the team that you're on, you know, you would like to see him go up against somebody who hits back to a certain extent. Now he did, you know, was very good against Highland Springs in the in the state title game. So that's a good sign f for me. How big is he? That's what I want to know. I think he's got good running back skills. I think he's got really good acceleration. Um, how much weight can he put on a five ten frame? Uh, if he's 5'10". A mm -hmm. lot of guys are an inch shorter than they're listed. He's 187 pounds right now. A guy like Khalil Herbert could carry 220 pounds on his 5'8", five, 5'9", five, frame and not lose any speed. Not everybody can do that. Like, if you think back to, like, J.C. Coleman, I, I think they put more weight on J.C. Coleman than his frame could support, and he lost a little bit of speed as, as, as a result. So where does Overton fall into the in, into that group if he can carry a lot of weight on his frame then i think he's got a chance and not lose any speed and, and acceleration i think he's got a chance to be a really good player um but you, you just have to see how his body develops but uh you know this is a very very prolific in-state running back and, and a good get for tech yeah the second highest ranked uh official running back there might be a few athletes in there uh, in the recruiting uh, rankings in the state of Virginia that might be running be a running back in college, but the second highest rate of running back in the state, the Gatorade Virginia High School Football Player of the Year, and this is a Class Six team, and they were dominating teams. And I know, like you said, it's filled with supermen, but if he ran for sixty three hundred rushing yards and ninety two touchdowns in three years at Freedom against Class Six opponents, that's pretty darn good. I don't care how good your team is. Yeah, I mean, at some point you have to look at the production. Right. And, uh, you know, like kind of like Tyler Mason last year at North Carolina. Obviously, that's a different situation because he was playing in, you know, single A ball, the mm -hmm. lowest level in North Carolina. So you question the competition. But at the same time, you can't question those numbers no. that, that he put up. And, uh, so, yeah, like I said, o Overton's a guy that I think Virginia Tech targeted from from the very beginning as an important recruit. And they got him again. Elijah Brooks. I think Pry's done a good job with his hires, like two very strategic hires there with Elijah Brooks and Fontel Mines.
Let's flip over to the defensive side of the ball for the only defense player we're going to talk about today, Sherrod Henderson. This past Sunday, Virginia Tech secured his commitment, and he is the first recruit out of the state of North Carolina. He's six foot three, two hundred and ten pounds from Heidi Trask High School. They went six and five last year, losing in the first round of the playoffs. Uh, Rocky Mount, North Carolina. Uh, he's the second defensive end in the class, joining Zeke Chinwike. This is a big frame for a defensive end. Yeah, and speaking of running backs, he actually plays a <laughs> running back for his high school, where I believe he rushed for about 1,200 it's yards. It's pretty comical last watching year. Him run as well. Oh, man, it's, it's funny. But, yeah, he's a defensive end for Tech. little on the small side for defensive end right now, but I do think he has a good frame. Um you know, uh, Duke, Michigan State, Virginia Tech. I think USF was was very much involved as well, and I think they're a program that's uh, the people underrate. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think he's a good get. I don't think he's a guy who's going to come in and you're like, yeah, he can play as a true freshman or even a redshirt freshman. But but I think he's a guy that after a couple years in the weight room, I think the frame and the overall athleticism is there. Yeah, he's certainly a freak athlete. He can dunk with ease in basketball, a really good basketball player uh, as well. Let's move over to the offensive line. Ron Cook Cook was feeling a little lonely and left out of all the recruiting madness uh, up to this past week, and he needed some beef in his O-line, and he got that And out of Nathaniel Wright, out of Woodbridge, Virginia, another Class 6 Virginia Tech uh, recruit uh, in the high school leagues uh, out of Woodbridge, Virginia, Forest Park High School, six foot five, two 275. Um, not the highest ranked recruit at all, but another great frame body right there. Great frame. You know, the picture we have of him uh, shaking hands with Brent Pry on the 50-yard line on a visit, and he is a big barrel-chested <laughs> dude. You know, he could play tackle or guard, I think, but you know, the natural size for him is already there. He'll continue to fill out and everything like that, but but there's a natural strength and a, and a – he's got a little nastiness to his game that I like. Uh, and the thing about offensive line recruiting – You can say this about any position to a certain extent, but it's so hard to evaluate offensive linemen. There are so many stories of highly ranked offensive linemen doing nothing and guys that nobody wanted going on to the NFL. Christian Darisaw. Christian Darisaw. Virginia Tech beat out Delaware State for Christian Darisaw. It's poor Hornets. Poor Hornets. And (laughs) and a year later, they beat out Delaware State for Dorian Strong. (laughs) <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, that's just the way it works sometimes. And, you know, I'm not saying the thing the right's going to be Christian Darisaw or anything, but I think he's a, he's a good prospect and he's a guy that tech has been on since the winter. All right. Well, the last recruit caught us off guard. I was at uh, a certain restaurant in Radford, no free advertisements. It was uh-huh. a good restaurant. And uh, we got the bat signal from Brent Pry. And we're like, all right, who could this be? And then I think Andy Bitter pointed out, He's a class of 2026, and we were really surprised. Yeah. And it ended up being a six foot five mobile quarterback named Peyton Falzone. And uh, I'm just going to go a little further, give credit to Andy Bitter for this joke. Peyton Falzone totally sounds like a Batman crime boss from Gotham City. And um, Nazareth High School out of Nazareth, Pennsylvania. Not too shabby to kick off that class. Yeah, yeah. Um, he's a guy. He was a first year starter this past year. His dad's the head coach, and it was an eleven and two team. They're a well coached, good team. Nineteen touchdowns, only four picks. He's a good athlete. You know, he ran for over four hundred yards, and he's got a great frame. Um, he's still got two years of development left, and. and you, you know, you can watch him play and, and you can say, yeah, I can see how he can develop and be a really highly ranked process, prospect. At the same time, he's got a really slow release right mm-hmm. now. Um, so right now he would not be, if they did rankings for guys his age, he don't, I don't know that they would necessarily rank him very high because of that release. Um, but he's got plenty of time to clean that up before he gets to, uh, to college. That, that's why you know, recruiting is so much projection, especially for a younger guy mm-hmm. like him. It's, uh, it, it's, I, I bet you, know, you can watch his senior film two years from now and compare it to his sophomore film from this past season, and you, you'll probably see a big change in his delivery and things like that once he has time to work on it and everything like that. But for a first-year starter, this past season was outstanding. He worked out at Tech's camp in June, which is where he picked up the scholarship offer. So Virginia Tech coaches got to see him in person. If he's made progress in his throwing motion and his, his quickness of his release since last season, I haven't been able to see it because, you know, all, all we have is, you know, highlight film from last year to go on. They would have been able to see that in person at camp. He's got a cannon for a sophomore in yeah, high school as well. He, he, he 
he throws a really good ball. He throws it hard and there's plenty of velocity on it, but it looks like a very catchable ball. Mm-hmm. And he, he fits it in there in, in tight spots. Uh, I will say this. He, he owes me a, a cheeseburger because I was literally about to walk out of that. I was really in the mood for a cheeseburger <laughs> on Saturday. I was going to go to Char- Sharky's and get a Blacksburger. I was I was and eating a cheeseburger when he committed there, as well. There you go. <laughs> and, uh, well, I was about to walk out the door at 6 o'clock when he committed and – when I sat down to write it up and everything, by the time I got done, by the time I got done updating his uh, his recruiting profile and everything like that, it was like seven o'clock, and I'm like, man, I'm hungry now, you know, I don't want to go to Sharky's and then order and then you know wait for muffins. So I just made food at home. Ah, oh, yeah. Cool. Well, at least he Peyton saved, fell zone he saved me get money. Here. Yeah, you order. I saw someone say that he needs to work a deal with one of the restaurants for a foul zone. Foul cal zones, zone. cal zones. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I think that that would be perfect right there. Completed over sixty-one percent of his passes as a sophomore quarterback. Good get for Virginia Tech to start their twenty twenty-six class. Looking ahead to the Fourth of July and the rest of the week, who should the Tech fans out there be looking for this weekend and beyond? You got Major Preston, who was originally going to announce this past week, but his I believe yesterday was his original. Yes. Decision date. I think they've pushed it back to July 6th now. It's a Saturday. It's yeah. a Saturday. Yeah. And I, I think that's a good sign for Tech. Um, Virginia Tech likes to stagger, like spread out their commitments. They, they generally don't have like two or three guys committing in one day. They, they like to keep the, keep the momentum going. Like you commit this day. You, you announce that day. You announce this day. Don't all do it in one day. Kind of keep the momentum going. And, and I, I think with Matthew Alton, like, nobody knew Matthew Alton was announcing. I think he announced on Sunday that he was going to announce on Monday. He's very quiet. Very quiet. His recruitment was very, very quiet. I liked how he handled his recruitment, actually. But uh, So I think at that point, Tech, uh, I don't think they, I think they didn't want two guys committing in, in the same day. That's just a theory on my <laughs> part. But uh, I think the fact that he pushed his verbal date back, knowing how Virginia Tech generally likes to handle their commitment announcements, um, because these days recruiting isn't like, like recruits just don't do it like they used to in the old days. You know, they, they call a coach up in the commit and it could be three or four guys on one day or, or, or whatever. It's planned these days mm-hmm. with the coaching staff. It's, it's a strategy a to it. Yeah, absolutely. It's very much a show. Um, so that makes me feel pretty good about Preston. I, I think he's pushed his commitment back um, because they didn't want two guys, uh, on the same and, day. On the same day. I could be totally wrong about that, but that's <laughs> my theory. I'm going with that right now. Cole Woodson, the brother of Virginia Tech football player Caleb Woodson, committed to Pittsburgh yesterday. He's a safety. You said that Tech fans shouldn't panic, and that might be a good sign for the future. You know, they may, I think they probably feel good about Messiah Delhomme. Mm-hmm. Um, and, again, Major Preston is a guy who at IMG Academy played safety this past year. Before that, when he was at Hopewell in Virginia, he played corner, but he's one of those guys who could potentially end up at either spot. Mm -hmm. Um, So you've already got one safety committed, and you could potentially have one, maybe two more coming into the boat. Like there, There were always more guys on the board at that safety spot this year, then Virginia Tech was going to be able to take. Unfortunately, I learned this morning that Messiah Delon broke his leg playing seven on seven ball in the seven five seven uh, fairly recently. I I don't know the significance of the injury. I mean, even a minor broken leg is fairly significant. Yeah, six right? weeks minimum. Right, right. but uh, I think I, I I hate that he broke. I hate that it happened. I think yeah. he's a very, very good player. I don't want to see anything set back his development. But at the same time, again, I think there are certain things happening in his recruitment that have helped Virginia Tech. You know, Ohio State was the other major player there. And Alabama's kind of operating like an arm's length. They're recruiting him without, like, going all in for him because yeah. they've got other targets because they're Alabama that can take anybody they want, right? Um well, Fahim Delane, who Virginia Tech was obviously also recruiting, he committed to Ohio State. So they've got three safety commits. I, I, so I don't think they have room for Delome anymore. And I, he was definite take for him early, but I don't know about now. Now that he's got a broken leg, you figure they would shy away even more, mm-hmm. and Alabama would probably move on. So I just think there's a lot of things pushing Delome towards Virginia Tech. Um, that's, I don't have any inside info on that. <laughs> that's just I'm just putting two and two together.
Well, thank you, Chris, and thank you all for tuning in wherever you are. We hope you have had we hope we have an amazing Fourth of July with friends and family, and we will see you sometime in the near future. Maybe next week we'll see how it plays out for another edition of the recruiting roundup here at Tech Sideline. For Chris Coleman, I am Nick Brown. We'll see you next time, and as always, God bless.